Yes, the name sounds ridiculous. Yeah, Miss Sun somehow, but the car itself, way perfect. Way, way perfect. This car gives the vibes of the Range Rover. You know, it gives the vibe of the uh, Charity Go. However, this car is also from Cherry, and then it was designed by a combination of people from Jaeco or from Cherry and people from Jaguar Land Rover because Cherry owns a stake in Jaguar Land Rover. Did you know that? Yeah, that Range Rover you're talking about, you're liking that's expensive. The very same people that made it had contribution in this one. Look at the lights at the back. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff, eh? This over here is the Range Rover Evoque. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. It's already an evoke, yeah. But it's evoking some evokes as you can see it. But otherwise, this over here is the Jayco J7. In this video, we are going to talk about it. We'll basically walk around it and admire the beauty, admire the futuristic design. And also, we are going to check the interior of the Jayco J7. And also, we are going to um, talk about the features of the car after that we are going to talk about the cost of ownership but in between somewhere there i am going to compare this car to the cars that it looks like or it took inspiration from <laughs> the japanese don't call it stealing or copying they call it taking inspiration the jayco j7 has taken inspiration from so many cars I think it's one, two, three, four. D don't worry, you will know those cars when, when we talk about them. But believe me, this everything in this car is not well thought of originally by the Chinese. They took inspiration of certain car brands. And then I'm going to indicate exactly what element that comes from what car. Yeah. Let's start the review by checking it out from the back. As you can see, it's beautifully designed. It says it slopes down, coupe style, and I love the light design. From left to right or right to left, beautifully designed. All the Chinese cars that are coming in our market these days have got this kind of light. So very, very soon, it will not be anything special. And then if it's not on, it looks like this. It's still beautiful. But otherwise, the only thing I hate about this car is the fakery of the exhaust tips. As you saw there, there are no exhaust tips, just fake or inject. Yeah, continue with the fakery. This uh, line that goes down here is supposed to be an event, but it's not. Maybe they left it open for the aftermarket uh, upgraders because there are some of us that like to, you know, modify cars. And then this would actually be good as an event that takes out the air. You know what I mean? But otherwise, uh, it's not anything bad. It's okay. I love it. It's making this car to look beautiful, actually. Yeah. I've got no issue with the rear of the car except the exhaust fakery. I'm sure the team from Jaguarland Rover, Cherry, and Jayco were like, let's make another one and we must make sure that this one looks totally different from the rest that we've done, especially in the grill in the front. And one was like with the hand up, okay, okay, we can make the grill to look like the one from the AMG GT, but it must be huge. It must be so big that this will not be able to be confused with any other car. And then this was produced look at it i have got nothing against it i like it it kind of looks beautiful to me you know what i mean the the grill is huge the daytime driving lights are skinnier well designed and the main beams are on the bottom on the bottom there is your main beams and probably your fog light yes it is a basically a different design that they make look at this uh, daytime driving lights beautifully done and also you see non led lights over there beautifully done and then at the bottom there as well You've got more lights. <laughs> yeah, you've got more lights at the bottom over there, as you can see. But otherwise, I have got nothing against this car. And let me tell you what they brought in our market in terms of this car. We've got only one uh, one model, which is the Jayco J7. But that Jayco J7 is divided into the following uh, categories or trims. We have the Vortex, which is 590, 549. 
we have the the, the glacier which is a 599 and then on the top of the range we've got the inferno the disco inferno which start from which is basically 679,000 yeah but i'll talk more about that when i do the cost of ownership for this uh j cool j7 now let us continue and go and check the interior of the jco j7 guys i have never been inside a tesla uh, car before never been inside a ford mustang mark e but when i was inside of this jco j7 look at it in black it's not bad in black eh? yeah look at it yo it's actually nice eh? yeah especially the black beige would be so nice but otherwise i was saying with the the interior screams the tesla it screams the uh the mark mustang mark e yes you know they with that too huge display but otherwise let's just go check it inside if they cover your eyes and put you inside the jayco j7 and hide the name on the steering wheel you will be forgiven to think that you are in a tesla or some sort of a volvo or a mustang mark e because wow the inspiration was taken from there i mean look at that big huge display over there otherwise the build quality in the jayco j7 is on the top yeah your multifunction steering wheel over there with all the buttons that you can think of exactly you can control your phone you can use your cruise control your volume and everything else and the steering wheel has got a flat, flat bottom and then also let's take a look at the inside you've got your air vents over there which i'm going to talk about them a bit later uh, the door is designed differently as you can see over there i'll also comment on it a bit later when i com comment the, the the inspiration for this car and then let's check out the back seat of the car uh still you've got electric window here when you get inside at least the people at the back have got access to the ventilation system yeah there's a seat pocket over there and then the sitting position is good you know and also let's check out let's, look at how it looks in the front looks beautiful yeah so otherwise the interior of this car guys for me it ticks all the boxes because the leather is good although it's artificial leather but it's good it's got that quality feel you know and then the driving position you you sit properly it's like you sit you're sitting like in the indian in a proper suv and this is the boot here which uh this is the size of the boot as you can see over here but otherwise uh at the bottom you've got your full spare wheel yeah the spare wheel is full it's not a biscuit or the one with no mag no you've got your mag you got your rear rim here full rim yes and then i like how you you can open the boot bottom twice and that's the over there is the the lead cover which you can remove and put at the bottom if not mistaken you get that to, to close the the boot uh by just the press of a button yeah you just press the button then it closes otherwise uh the interior of this car gives everything so now when i'm going to talk about the features of this car i am not going to list everything that is normal and obvious and expected i'm only going to focus on those that are trying to be uh, market changing those that you would not even expect to find in a chinese car like this for this price now before we talk about the cost of ownership for this car now let's go talk about what inspired this car this being the chinese car the chinese do not agree will never agree that they copy and paste it or they steal an idea no they always say we took inspiration so now the jayco j7 took inspiration from which car now let's talk about it number one if you can take a look at the events inside they will remind you of those in the volvo they took inspiration from the volvo there and then also if you can take a look on the door handles from the inside you would be reminded of the land rover they take uh, inspiration from the Land Rover. They did not copy or still they took inspiration. The door handles on the outside. I am so happy that Land Rover with their Vela did not uh, patent this or copyright this and stop everyone else from making it. Just like what Volvo did with the seat belt. They did not patent it. So now that means everyone else can do it. And the door handles of this car, the inspiration came from the Range Rover Vela of the Land Rover. Uh, also, the design style, especially from the side view, looks like a Range Rover Evoque. It being designed by Land Rover, uh, Range Rover people and, and Cherry people, you understand, because it's basically the same team. And then the front grille is inspired by the AMG GT. 
The interior is inspired by the likes of Volvo, the likes of Tesla, uh, the likes of the Ford Mustang Mark E somewhere there. You can go and compare it. So, so in, in, in short, the Chinese does not steal or copy. They took inspiration. This car is so many cars in one. This car is, you think you're looking at the Land Rover, uh, Range Rover. The next thing is like a Vela. You get inside, it's like a Mustang, mach -E, or Tesla, or Volvo. You, it, Yeah. So that's what the Chinese are good at. You know, that gear knob is from, uh, what do you call, what do you call this? Tank 300, if not mistaken. Yeah. So basically a lot of cars made this one car and I, I commend them. They final product looks beautiful the final product is nice or oh, the realized as well uh took inspiration from the uh, france suzuki france or toyota Eben Eben cruiser something like that go check it out you will see inspiration was taken from a whole lot the fakery design exhaust that's from audi audi started that you know what i mean so it's basically a whole lot of car in a one car still in the topic of the uh cherries uh Jayco they are planning to bring us the electric suv that took inspiration exactly from the land rover defender look at it this is it it's gonna be fully electric it's coming to our market very very soon i don't know how it's gonna do those ones that like a land rovers but can't afford it maybe they'll go for this one i don't know there's no pricing there's nothing on it just that i know that it's coming and it's coming very very soon the jayco j6 land rover <laughs> defender wanna be <laughs> please don't kill me i'm just playing Like I said, I'm not going to waste your time and tell you how many airbags it has because it has all of them. I want to tell you about A, B, C, and E, B, D, and B, C, D, all those breaker seats, mambo jambos. It has all of them. So let me just jump right, right straight into the interesting things. Both driver and the passenger seats are electrically controlled. Uh, in the lower trims, you get 13.2 inch of the infotainment, infotainment display. On the top one, the Inferno, you've got 14.8, so it's huge. It's very, very, very huge. It, it comes with Sony sound system. Um, what else? You've got your built-in navigation, or you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then it has got so many others. Advanced driving assist system, something like that, yeah. It has the driver monitoring system. It can tell if you're dozing off or if you're not focusing. It has got a vehicle and pedestrian and bicycle uh, detection, adaptive cruise control, forward collision, uh, uh, rear collision, lane departure warning, lane keeping system, multi-collision, brake, uh, speed assist, intelligent active speed limit, traffic jam assist. It can see the and read the, uh, the road sign, intelligent high beam control, the speed assist, the traffic side recognition, like I've mentioned, the blind spot detection. Also, the Jayco J7 comes with the rear PDC, front PDC, and the rear surround view cameras for all the models. Who does that? Only the Chinese. The difference between these cars that I was able to pick up easily is that the top two trims are available on 19 inches alloy and then the vortex the entry level is available on 18 inches alloy that is basically the difference oh yeah and the sunroof the entry level don't have a sunroof the other two have a sunroof that is basically the difference Now, let's do the cost of ownership for the Jayco J7, starting with the Inferno, which is $679,900. we are going to assume zero deposit. We know you don't have money. We're going to assume no trade-in. We're going to assume 13% interest rate. We're going to assume 72 months. And also, we're going to assume the maximum balloon, which is 35%, although some banks can give up to 40%. And then your cost of ownership is going to be 11449 Now, let's go and put in the factor of insurance which was done in my profile which is around 1650 so the total cost of ownership for the jayco j7 in Feno, the top trim is going to be 13,099 rand yeah boo i don't affect the cost of petrol you know that by now now if 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 this is too much for you you still want the best uh, car with the best technology then you have to downgrade back to the middle one which is the glacier and with the glacier you are going to pay the following including insurance you're going to pay eleven thousand seven hundred and fifty two. 
And if money is the problem, but you still want a cool looking Chinese car, then go to the entry level, the Vortex, and in including insurance, you're gonna pay 10,895. That's it. Now, Cherry's Jayco's dealership in South Africa is running a special. And the difference between my, my estimation and their estimation is that they are doing um, variable interest linked to uh, between 9.75 and then 10.5. Also, uh, they are doing 40% balloon payment uh, and they also require 10% uh, deposit. That is basically the difference. So it's up to you. You can... Uh, Try my estimation, or you can go and get the promotion from the Jayco. Then they're gonna be gladly uh, willing to assist you. Before I go, I almost forgot one important thing: all the Jayco J7 models come in one engine. All of them. You get 1.6 liter inline four engine, mated on the seven-speed dual clutch transmission yes there is no any other engine uh, choice except this one it, it pumps out 145 kilowatts and 290 newton meters of torque but but the the, the inferno is an all-wheel drive the glacier and the the vert, uh, vortex are front wheel drive yeah so the advantage is on the four wheel drive so if you want to take off fast at the traffic light go get the inferno now comparing this to my tucson that sun pumps at 150 kilowatts and 295 kilowatts so there's five difference five kilowatts difference five uh meters difference so who would win in the race the jacob would win because it's newer the new the engine is newer it's reconfigured it's newer but it will win yeah so i doubt if my tucson can beat this one but surely my tucson sounds way better than this because i've got four exhaust pipes and these hey <laughs> yeah Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, subscribe till I see you on the next one. Peace.